Hello, peace and blessings, my friends. My name is Ben. Welcome back to another class. In today's practice, I like to call this a warrior flow. We'll be doing a Hatha Yoga flow rooted in the foundations of the Warrior Two posture. So we'll start in Warrior Two and go from there. Uh, but before we even get there, let's go ahead and get started in a tabletop position. As you get to your tabletop position, go ahead and flip one or both palms backwards, stretch into the wrists. I like to start to draw circles with my shoulders over the wrists. But you can take any movement from this tabletop position that just helps you come into your body, create a little bit of space, a little bit of awareness. And this is a warrior practice, so we'll be focused on the legs, the lower body for the majority of the practice. But that doesn't mean the arms and the hands aren't involved. Every posture is a full body pose. That's why we're starting out bringing sensation and awareness into the palms, into the knuckles, into the fingertips. From here, go ahead and sit back onto the heels. Feel free to tuck the toes to stretch your feet. I like to get my pinky toe under as well. And then you can shake the arms out or maybe take some wrist circles. Do something to just offset the wrist work that we did in tabletop. Maybe shake it out. And then I like to do this with the toes tucked again, but go ahead and interlace the fingertips and then flip and push the palms away. It's like an upright cat pose as we stretch the back body. And then inhale for upright cow as we reach the arms overhead, palms to the sky, back bend. Exhale, push forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, push forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, push forward. Inhale, open up. Exhale, push forward. Bring the palms back to the mat. Walk out to downward facing dog. If you have the space, crawl your dog a little bit longer. Then bring a little bend into the knees, a little buoyancy into the hips. From here, let's go ahead and sweep the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Draw the knee into the chest, hips up to the sky. Step through to warrior two. Right foot top of the mat, left heel drops down. And as I foreshadowed at the beginning of the class, we find ourselves in warrior two. If you're curious why I never teach Warrior 1, drop me a comment and I'll, I'll let you know. But I find Warrior 2 to be a foundational open hip position. That's why I teach a lot of Warrior 2. Honestly, Warrior 2 is my favorite pose, always has been, always will be. It gives an opportunity to find the balance between both legs, the stretching of both arms, reaching to our past with our left hand, to our future with our right hand. Just puts us squarely in the body. From here, start to straighten your right leg. Reach the right hand forward and work into triangle pose. Don't worry about it being a deep triangle pose. So this is kind of where I am on my first round. I'm still far away from the ground, but I'm strong in the legs. I like to even bring hands to hips and really feel myself and feel my pelvis as I hinge. We'll slowly start to bring both hands to the ground, bend into the right knee as you turn to face forward. Step back to plank pose. From plank pose, stay here, push the ground away for five, four, three, two, on one downward facing dog. Lift the hips back. Sweep left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Left knee into chest, hips press up to the sky. Warrior two, left foot all the way, top of the mat. Circle the arms open. Find your foundation. Strong bend into the left knee. So I learned this recently. It's a little bit of a game changer. And you can't really see because I'm facing away from you, but you can bring your right hand to the front of your right hip and then push the front of your right hip into the right hand. And that'll really kind of square you 
into the energy of the warrior two. So imagine you could almost uh, kind of push your right hip forward a little bit as you pull the left hip back and then as you pull the left hip back, bend deeper into your left knee and we're just strengthening all around. Triangle pose, extend and reach into it. If you have a block, feel free to utilize a yoga block. Slowly, start to bring both hands to the mat. Turn to face forward, and then step back to a plank pose. Hold your plank if you want to move through a vinyasa. You could also do that, but today we're just, I'm just cueing a plank hold. We're here for five, four, three, two, downward facing dog on one. Drive the hips back, butt faces up toward the sky. Inhale, sweep right leg up to the sky, three-legged down dog. Step all the way through, find your warrior two. Option to flip the palms to face up. Be open to receive. Lunge forward, take a deep bend into your right knee, but if you feel yourself leaning forward, shift the torso slightly back. Refine your warrior two, strong in your left thigh. Maybe you even try to lift your back toes off the mat, and that'll really make sure things are engaged. And then head to triangle pose. From triangle pose, re-enter warrior two as we slowly bend into the right knee. Take this into reverse warrior. And then take your reverse warrior forward to balancing half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Breathe deeply, breathe slowly as you pursue the balance with your open hips. Slowly step back, find the back of your mat, and then all the way into Skandasana lunge at the back of your mat. You can stay standing or you can come all the way down into the full lunge. Try to sit with a tall spine, you're here for five. Engage the right thigh, four. Flex the right toes back, three. Last two, on one. Shift to the top of the mat, turn forward, plant the hands. Step back to plank. Go through your vinyasa, chaturanga up dog, or hold plank with me for five, four, three, two, on one, downward facing dog. Sweep left leg to the sky, inhale, exhale, step, top of the mat. Warrior two, rise up, and you have a few breaths once you get here, feel like a warrior. The warrior stays in the present moment. Even through all the distractions, the warrior doesn't bring themselves to the future or the past. The warrior finds themselves exactly where their body is, in control of their body, their breath, and their focus. And a true warrior finds compassion at the same time. Triangle pose, find it. Slowly bend into your left knee. Rise up and reverse your warrior. And then shift forward. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Balance. Either your left hand is floating or you're light on your left fingertips. So try not to push weight into your left palm. And then slowly step back. We're going all the way back to Skandasana lunge. Skandasana is a warrior pose as well. It's actually named after uh, the sage Skanda, 
who is actually known to be the, the god of war, in fact. And when I think of like war and battle in these contexts, it's not violent, right? You can shift to the top of the mat. We just have our journey to down dog now. Right? So it's not about the violence of war, but it's about the journey of war. Just how the Bhagavad Gita is about war, but it's more about what kind of action and uh, taking right action and doing your duty and doing your dharma, right? That's more of the vibe. All right, so let's meet in downward facing dog. Let's reach the right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. And then step through, find the top of the mat. We're going to warrior two. Because right, I think as yoga practitioners, we, we all understand the value of peace and compassion over anything else. At the same time, war is just a representation of the times in life where sometimes we have to do those things that are hard to do. Maybe sometimes we live a life that it's not possible to only live in peace and compassion. Sometimes we have to take challenging action and we have to do so in a way that's righteous, that's fair, and that is true to ourselves. We're heading to triangle pose. Reach out into it. From triangle, pass through into warrior two, and then pass through into reverse warrior. Just like a wave, inhale. Exhale, start your journey, half moon. Try to keep your right toes facing forward as much as you can. Right, so war is now something we should be able to find grace in, or we should try to find grace in. Because if the war is not righteous, right, if we're not on the right side, then we shouldn't be fighting it. But there are some things in life worth fighting for, such as for the freedom of others. Step back, skandasana, take your time with the step back. Take your time getting into Skandasana. Top of the mat, down dog. Go right into down dog. We'll start skipping the vinyasa. Unless you want to take it, then add it in. Your practice, your choice. Left leg to the sky. Step through, warrior two. And in the Bhagavad Gita, the whole... Um, the whole drama of it is that Arjuna is this um, righteous warrior, right? He's known to be the, the best warrior in the land, and he's also known to be a good person. And so right before this battle was about to start, um, to try to kind of uh, reclaim righteousness and justice in this society, Arjuna was having second thoughts, and he said, how can I fight this battle? I don't want to kill these people. A lot of them are my extended family members and friends. I don't want to do this. I'm not a violent person. And we'll head to triangle pose now. And what Krishna said in response to that was, it's your duty to fight this battle. And you know that you're doing it for the benefit of the beings in your uh, society. Even though war is not what we want to do, and we'll pass through warrior two to reverse warrior. In this case, it's for the benefit of others and it's for taking the right action and it's for doing uh, my duty. And start to lean out half moon pose. But really, <laughs> the Bhagavad Gita is not about the war. And the war is actually just a metaphor for the, um, the mental and spiritual journey that we go on. We'll start to slowly step back. And the idea is that Krishna was telling Arjuna, the warrior, to be non-attached. Right? Don't be attached to life. Like he said, it's hard when people die, as we had to Skandasana. However... We all just get reborn again because everything is cyclical. So why be attached? You have to do the right thing and you must take action when it's the right thing to do to take action. Shift forward, plant the hands down, downward facing dog. If you want to go through a vinyasa, you can. All right, so we bring ourselves to down dog. Left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Step through, find warrior two. Rise up to stand, find the posture. And then Arjuna realized that he was only scared to fight because of fear. And when he stopped being attached to um, his own well-being and the well-being of his enemies, he was able to agree that the war was worth fighting. And that can apply to your life in any little thing, something that you're facing resistance to, something that you don't want to do for some reason. Let's go ahead and head to triangle. 
sometimes the right thing to do is to take action. But again, the war was just a metaphor, so it's debated. We'll pass through World Warrior II to Peaceful War. It's debated whether this war that Arjuna fought was actually real or if it was actually just an allusion to meditation and um, learning to be non-attached to, to the things in the mind and to the desires because that non-attachment will lead to freedom. Step back, skandasana. Hopefully some of this makes sense. I'm no, I'm no spiritual guru or I don't have all the answers, right? I'm just learning all this stuff myself. And I try to share it with y'all in case it um, inspires some sort of insight. Top of the mat, downward facing dog. From down dog, sweep the left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Step through, top of the mat. Rise up. So Krishna was telling Arjuna, you're too attached to life. You're too attached to your material body. You're too attached to, um, you know, doing... doing um, maybe doing what an outside view would see as right. Krishna said, be non-attached. Don't be attached to life itself. But I think the metaphor for that is just don't be attached to our desires. Don't be attached to how we need things to be because then we'll suffer. Well, let's go to triangle pose. And then pass through warrior two, reverse your warrior. Lean out to half moon. And we're all warriors in some way. We all are fighting some sort of fight, some sort of mental fight. Right? I know a lot of us experience um, you know, mental health challenges. Or it could be something physical. You fight for maybe your safety. You fight for your job. Step back, skandasana. But whatever battles you're fighting through, the Bhagavad Gita says, just go ahead and take action. Take the action that you know in your heart is the right thing to do because it's for the benefit of yourself and all other beings. Shift to the top of the mat. We know what the right action is most of the time, but it's just really doing it that's most important. Not only doing that action, but completely uh, releasing the fruits of that action. So acting for the benefit of others and not uh, being concerned with what we might receive back from that. We just do good and then we move forward. We do good, move forward. Do good, move forward. That's the message. Right leg up. Step through warrior two. Last round. Rise up to stand. Deepen into the pose. Find triangle. Move in a little bit more fluid this round. Reverse your warrior. Bend into your right knee. And then lean out for half moon last time. This time, let's try something new. Let's take some new action. Bend the left knee, reach back. Maybe you can bind left hand to left foot. If not, that's okay, just stick with me. Turn to face forward and rise up into dancer's pose, Natarajasana. Nataraj actually represents the cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction. And destruction just leads to creation. That's why there's nothing to be attached to, as Krishna was trying to tell um, the warrior, Arjuna. There's nothing to be attached to. Every death is just a rebirth. Every destruction is just a creation. Start to release and come up to standing at the top of the mat. Open up your palms, lift your head high, take a few breaths. Reach the arms up to the sky. Inhale. Bend the knees. Forward fold on your exhale. Halfway lift. Lengthen the spine. Place the hands down. Step back. Option for a chaturanga up dog or just a little plank hold. And then let's meet in down dog. Last round, other side. Left leg to the sky. Step the left foot through. Find the top of the mat. Warrior two. Rise up. Triangle pose, find it. Warrior two, rise up. Reverse warrior. Half moon. From half moon, we're going to the chapasana variation, binding the right hand to the right foot. 
And then we'll turn forward, we'll rise up, dancer's pose, as a good reminder that nothing truly belongs to us, that everything is cyclical and everything we have, we will need to release to make room for whatever is coming next. Slowly release and come to standing. There's a mudra that we can find, I'll turn to face you, of bringing the palms together, kind of making like two bowls or cups with the hands, and then bring it together to make a bigger bowl. And this mudra can just be symbolic of an offering. Kind of imagine that you're offering up whatever you have, maybe to the greater powers, maybe to the earth. In this way, we're kind of not only offering up our possessions um, and letting ourselves almost become unattached, almost empty ourselves in a way, but we're also making ourselves available to, to catch the grace of the universe. We're also making ourselves available to catch whatever it is that um, is ready for us. Go ahead and inhale the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Place the hands on the ground. Step back to plank pose. Option to step or flow or migrate your way. Back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, drop the knees to the mat. Come to a seated position. Option to sit on a block. That's actually what I'm going to do. Option to sit cross-legged or on your shins. Let's join for some pranayama to close, uh, to bring some warrior energy into our, um, not only our bodies, but into our lungs, into our minds, into our spirits. So just like we made two cups before, go ahead and do that. Bring them together. And then take those cups up and out to the sides. Make a V shape with the arms. Try to make them bowls or cups that could actually hold some water in your hands. Go ahead and take an inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. We'll go into Kapalabhati. We'll do a hundred rounds. Sharp exhales out the nose. Inhale. Begin. Out, 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 out. Keep going. We're about halfway there. As you keep going, each time you exhale, a little bit of air naturally flows in after. And just keep it going. Keep kind of pumping the abdomen. We're at 30 more. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, hook the thumbs, reach the arms overhead. Three sips through the mouth. Three more sips through the mouth. One more sip through the nose. Find the very tippy top. Hold your space for five, four, three, two. Exhale out the top of the head. Feel an insight rise up to the top. Feel an idea rise. Feel your spirit rise. Feel the energy in your body. The past is behind you, the future is in front of you, the east is to the left of you, the west is to the right of you, you're right in the center of all these different things. Dawn to the left, dusk to the right. Memories in the past, potential in the future. Reflections behind us, optimism in front of us. The moon to our left, the sun to our right the clouds up above, the soil down below. Find yourself in the center of all of these polarities. Just grateful for the chance to be the one who inhabits the house. Take a few more breaths.
I'll offer one Om to end the practice today. Om just being yeah, the sacred syllable that represents the connection among all things, the connection to something greater. I bow to each of you in all of your efforts today. Thank you for coming through and practicing with me. Thank you for sharing your practice, your energy, and your spirit. I hope today's class was an interesting exploration for you, and I hope you use it as inspiration for the rest of the day. I hope to see you again soon on the mat. Until next time, have an amazing rest of your day.